This is Neil Patwari, and I'm going to introduce the topic of entropy for digital communication systems. Over the course of this semester, we've talked a lot about bits, bit rate, bandwidth efficiency in terms of bits per second per hertz, and other measures that are really closely tied to bits. And the question is, how come we've never talked about bits, what a bit is, and what bit rate we need? So when we have a particular source, say voice or video or um, text messages, we have a certain amount of bits and we've never really questioned or quantified what that means. The key confusion comes from the fact that we know that we can perform compression on files and sources and we can reduce the rate of that source. You know that you can get audio at a higher rate or a lower rate. And these may have different quality, um, but they are then different numbers of bits. Um, we know that you can zip a file and it immediately becomes smaller. And it contains exactly the same information. There are two types of source coding, lossy and lossless. And so some examples of lossy source coding would be you know, JPEG images, for example, um, or MP4, the format that I'm recording right now. It doesn't save exactly what is on my screen. It loses some of that information and what you see is slightly less quality. Some examples of lossless coding um, would be the zip um, uh, compression format. It's actually uh, um, using an algorithm called Lempel Ziv. So in information theory, the idea of entropy corresponds to measuring how much information is really contained within each sample or each letter of my information source. And so we come up with this, uh, this measure of entropy based on what we really think that source coding will allow us to do in terms of what is the lowest bit rate we can get for a certain source. And so we're going to start out this discussion by talking about entropy of a single random variable. To motivate this, I'm going to actually start with an example. And this example is a random audio source. The sample value is not uniformly distributed among five different values. We're saying in this example that values closer to zero are more likely. So I have this probability density function that my source x i, um, which is the probability that my random variable x takes on a particular value x i, is equal to one sixth if the value is two. It's equal to one fourth if the value is one. It's equal to one half for the value zero. It's equal to one eighth for the value negative one and one sixteenth for the value negative two. Okay, so I've got five different possible values. My, my random variable x can take on the values. The values closer to zero are more likely. The question is, how can I encode x to have an average of 15 eighths bits per sample, given that the probabilities are as listed? Um, it's really a question to make you think of some ways that we could encode this data. I, if I have five values, I could take three bits and I could assign a unique three bit pattern to each of these five values. That would be one way to do it. This solution is more efficient. Okay, so if I have a two, I'm gonna convert that to a one, 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 zero. Okay, so four bits. And then if I have a one, I'm gonna encode that to a one, zero. If I have a zero, I'm gonna encode that to just a zero. If I have a minus one, I'm gonna encode that to a one, one, zero. And if I have a minus two, I'm gonna encode that to a one, 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 one. So their number of bits differ per sample, but I could still read it from a file. Say, let's say I wanted 
uh, I received one 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 zero zero one one zero zero one zero I could translate this because I know that um, for any of the any of the values that have less than four bits they end in zero so if I get to four bits I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna convert that back this must be a two this is just a zero I know that um, whenever I see a zero I would stop and I would convert that value this is gonna be a zero one one zero must correspond to a minus one another zero again a converts to a zero and then the one zero encoded value converts to a one now how many bits does x take on average well um, this is where I would kind of say what is the expected value of the number of bits for one sample and I can find that by kind of taking a weighted average. There's a 1 16th probability that I'm going to have a value of a 2. And in that case, I would send 4 bits. So 1 16th of the time, I'm going to send 4 bits. Then 1 4th of the time, I'm going to get a 1. And that 1 takes 2 bits to send. And then half the time, I'm going to just use the one bit of a zero to convey a zero. And then one eighth of the time, I'm going to send three bits for the minus one. And finally, one sixteenth of the time, I'm going to use four bits again for the value minus two. And what I get out of this is a. And if I convert all this to a denominator of eight, I get. Uh, 15 up top. So I do get 15 eighths bits per sample out of this encoding scheme. Again, this is just one scheme for encoding this source. So that gets me to my motivation for coming up with the definition of entropy. So, so let x be a discrete random variable with probability mass function p sub i used to denote the probability that x is equal to little x sub i. Let Sx be the range of x. The entropy of x is this entropy h of x equals minus the sum from i in the set Sx pi log base 2 pi. I need this negative sign because the probabilities are all less than 1, so the, their logarithm is negative, and I don't want to have my entropy be a negative number of bits. In terms of what does this mean? This is a way to express the information in that random variable. How much do you learn when you learn the value of x? That's one way to think about it. If x has very little randomness, like it takes one value 99.9% .9 of the time, well, I don't learn very much. If it's uh, uniformly random, I would tend to think there's more randomness in there. And so I'm going to learn more. So entropy uh, as a word, you can kind of exchange it in English with the word randomness. And you can exchange it with the word information. That's certainly what we're talking about and using this for. Um, one other thing to notice, well, actually I'll mention a couple things to notice. One is that only the probability pi matters. It doesn't matter what the values you're sending are. It doesn't matter if I'm sending 2 through minus 2 or 0 through 4 or 1 through 5. It doesn't really matter what the values are. As long as the probabilities stay the same, then that entropy will stay the same. Um, the other thing to notice is that if you have a value that you consider in your range, but it has a probability of zero, then you're going to get into this trouble where you have a log of zero. But um, you can show that in the limit, zero log base two of zero is zero. So you would use 
the value of zero in that entropy formula if you had a pi that was zero. Back to this example, what is the, let's ask the question, what is the entropy of x? Okay, I'm going to solve this by plugging into this formula. I have minus probability times log of the probability for each of the five values. So I'm going to have five terms. I'm going to take first the value of 2, which has a probability 1 16th. So I'm going to take 1 16th log base 2 of 1 16th. And then the next term is going to be for the value x equals 1. It's 1 fourth log base 2 of 1 fourth, and I'm going to do this for every term. What I get out of this is, um, first of all, log base 2 of 1 16th is minus 4. The minus 4 goes in the numerator then over here, and I get 4 over 16th, and the minus signs cancel out, so I'm going to get 1 fourth. Similarly, log base 2 of 1 fourth is minus 2, so I'm going to get 1 half. 1 half again, uh, because log base 2 of 1 half is minus 1. Log base 2 of 1 eighth is minus 3, so I'm going to get 3 eighths. And then again, the 4 sixteenths, and I'm going to get the 15 over 8 as my total. Okay, so my entropy of this random variable is in fact 5 15 eighths, and I do have an encoding scheme that makes me be able to have a number of bits per sample of 15 eighths. Okay, so in this case the entropy and the source encoding rate do match up. Okay, one more example. Okay, Bernoulli random variable is one that takes two values. So my probability mass function is going to be either x equals 1 or x equals 0. And for the x equals 1, I'm going to call this probability s. It's some number between 0 and 1. And then 1 minus s for the other value. 0 everywhere else. Okay, so I've got two possible values. The question is, what is the entropy of this random variable? Okay, for the answer, I'm going to plug into the formula. It's a sum with the minus sign out front, so every term I'm going to take the probability, multiply by the log base 2 of that probability again. The next one is 1 minus s log base 2 of 1 minus s. Okay, um, there's not a whole lot I can do to simplify this really, so I'll just leave it like that. And um, I have a plot in the notes that uh, looks at the value of s, let's say from 0 to 1. And this plot, if I plot this function of s, it's going to reach a maximum at 0.5 and it kind of looks like this and this maximum is 1. That makes sense because when I have a probability of 0 of getting x equals 1 and a probability 1 of getting x equals 0, I know with certainty what is going to happen. Every time I run this random variable it's going to be 0. Well, in that case there's no randomness. The entropy is 0. As the probability goes up to 0.5, the entropy reaches its maximum. I have very little idea beforehand, before I flip a coin, for example, with, the, with this uh, random variable, I have very little idea what that outcome is going to be, whether it's going to be 0 or 1. It's the maximum amount of randomness that I could have in this experiment. As I get closer to s equals 1, I'm always going to get an outcome of 1. It doesn't matter what that outcome is. It matters that I'm always going to get the same outcome. And so my entropy is very, very low. And it goes to 0 at s equals 1. So both of these examples hopefully have given you a, a decent introduction to what entropy means for a random variable. In the next segments, we'll talk about what happens when I have more than one random variable.